So I've gotten a number of comments and DMs from people asking how I edit my videos and requesting for a tutorial. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I do it. And if you're too lazy to follow along this tutorial, I made some templates. So just a brief backstory, I created my YouTube channel back in 2020 and during my first couple of videos, I was being really creative with my intros. I made a Facebook intro, Twitter, Netflix, Spotify, Zoom. I would post those intros on TikTok and they kind of went semi-viral on there and that's when I received a lot of comments and requests about a video tutorial. Mind you, that was over three years ago and after consistently promising for a tutorial and then postponing it, three years later, here it is. I actually plan on making a series on this editing with aisle and so this first episode is going to be specifically on how i make the ios or mac notifications graphics basically like the graphics on an iphone or a macbook and so with the succeeding episodes i plan to make an episode solely on netflix and then spotify and then zoom and just have one video dedicated for each style so without further ado let's get started <laughs> So we're on my computer now and the two programs that I use to edit is number one, Canva, and number two, Adobe Premiere Pro. So on Canva, that's where I create all of my graphics and then on Adobe is where I stitch my videos and do all the effects, transitions, music, everything on there. So I'll show you exactly how I create my graphics on Canva. So on Canva, you're gonna create a design and set it to presentation 16 by 9. So after you choose this file size, I like to set my background as black. Most of the graphics are in white, so you wanna have that contrast and see what your graphics actually look like. So in text, you're gonna add a heading. So first, we're gonna create the lock screen. The official font that Apple uses is called San Francisco, but that's not actually here on Canva. So the font that I like to use as a replacement for that is called inter and the typeface on this is very similar to san francisco this is actually the font that i use for most of my videos so you can set this up to whatever time you want i'm going to put it to 11:59. and with the letter spacing i actually like to make it to negative 50 because i feel like this is a little too spaced out so you want to make it a little bit more closer together and then this is where we're gonna add the notification bar so if you go to elements and then under shapes there's this round edged box fun fact a few years ago canva didn't used to have this specific shape you had to search for round edged rectangle and it came in very limited sizes but with this new shape that they have it's very customizable you're just gonna elongate the box and kind of mimic the notification bar in the lock screen so with the round corners i don't want to make it too round but also not too stiff so i feel like 20 five is the sweet spot and then with the transparency i actually like to bring it down to like 90 or 85 actually 90 90 is good so now you can customize this however way you want so for example i want to create a notification from the ios calendar so if you want to save your time you can actually just use any of these calendar notification icons that they have on canva but for me i want it to look exactly how it looks on your phone so i'm going to search for the calendar icon in png so whatever app you want to search for in the iPhone theme, you just need to add the iOS right after the app. So you can search for calendar iOS PNG, gallery iOS PNG, just add the words iOS. Anyway, this one looks like a good icon, so I'm going to import it to one of my folders. And then add a text, set it to enter, make it a bit smaller. For the app name itself, you want to set it to gray. So for this one, let's put calendar. So this is an example of how the notification will look like. If you want to have a realistic reference, you can actually just search for calendar notification iOS. 
And then you'll have all of these graphics that you can actually reference to. You can just look at these graphics, find some inspiration, and replicate them. So usually how they're built is there's gonna be an icon at the top for the app, the name of the app, and then specifically what the notification is about. So again, you can use this as reference to make your notifications look as realistic as possible. So there's a little headline that says weekend meeting and then the detail will say today at 9.30. We can adjust it like this. So instead of you have a meeting in 30 minutes, the headline could be meeting with aisle and then the detail could be today at 10 a.m. So this one looks a little bit more realistic because we referenced some of the actual graphics from like an iPhone. So I actually do this step by step. I will replicate this, delete, replicate, delete. So this one says 11.59 and then I want the next clip to be 12. So when the clock strikes 12, I want this notification to pop out. So here's a tip if you're using Canva Basic versus Canva Pro. So for Canva Pro, I can download these as PNG with a transparent background. For Canva Basic, you can actually set your background as green. Pretend like it's a green screen and then download it as PNG. Okay, so now we're in Adobe Premiere. Here's an editing tip is to be organized with your folders, especially if you want to reference back any sound effects, music, or graphics. You don't want to look at your project folder and scavenge everything. So to save time and save yourself from going through all of the files, you can organize your project into different folders. So usually these are the naming conventions I will create. I have a folder for footage, graphics, music, sound effects, and then sequence. Anytime I want to reference back a specific music file or a specific graphic, I'll just go through any of these folders and easily search for what I'm looking for. So anyway, let's experiment with this stock footage that I have of the sky. So I'm gonna name this video tutorial. And since this is a sequence, I'm gonna drag it down to sequence. So if you drag the 1159 graphic, it will look like this. And then right at second number two, we're gonna replace this with the 12. And then on top of 12, let's add in the notification. And so what we're missing here is actually the sound effects. So you can go to YouTube and search search for UI sound effects. And there are a lot of really good sound effects here actually. There's actually one that I used to use a lot. Let me see if I still have it. Especially before I subscribed to the stock footage or stock music platforms, I used to just search for free sound effects on YouTube. There's this one that I specifically use all the time. I think it's this one. Yep, this is the sound effects for user interface that I use in all of my previous, like especially with my first few vlogs. This is the one that I use for my videos and I'm gonna link this below. I feel like the sound is very crisp and it's very unique from the other ones that I found. To download this, you can just search for YouTube to WAV converter. You could either use WAV or MP3. I like to use WAV. Sometimes I receive errors on Adobe Premiere whenever I use MP3 files but I've never gotten an error when I use WAV files. So once that's downloaded, you can import it to the sound effects file. When you click on it, you can hover over each of the sound effects and see which ones you like to use. So this chime sounds good for a notification so on my keyboard i click on i for the beginning i think i means input and then wherever you want it to end you can just click on o which is the output so you want to place it here right exactly when it hits 12. let's look at the timeline you can leave it like this, which is okay, but I'd like to add a little bit more attention to detail with the graphics. So for the notification, you can click on cross dissolve, which basically makes the graphic fade in. Looks like this, but you can shorten it to 10 maybe. And then click on position. Be mindful of the sound effects. So with this chime, there's actually like two hoops. So where the transition starts, I'll put on a keyframe. And then where the transition ends, I'll put in another keyframe. In the middle, where the there's a second hoof on the sound effects. Let's put another keyframe here. So keep in mind that on the last keyframe is exactly where the notification should land. So it's supposed to be in its original placement. So on the first keyframe, we want to put it a little bit above. Let's set it to 300. And then on the middle keyframe, we want the notification to bounce like this. So with the second keyframe, let's put it a little bit below. So when you play it, it's supposed to look like this. If you want to have a little bit more attention to detail actually, you can click on the keyframes, right click, and then click on temporal interpolation. Click on ease out, and then ease in, and then ease out. Basically just like to window the effects. It's supposed to make the movement look more smooth.
anytime you want to use like an iOS inspired notification, think about the footage that you have and try to be creative with what type of notification you want to zoom into. So for example, if you have a makeup video and you want to put in what specific makeup product you're using and you want it to look like a notification like this one, instead of this one being at the center, you can just duplicate this. You can actually group it, make it a little bit smaller because you don't want it to cover the entire screen and kind of place it in the side. You can change calendar to notes and do the same thing. Look for notes, app, iOS, PNG. This one's from Wikipedia, so it's reliable. Go to Canva, click on the app. You can even just drag it here. So now you have a notes graphic. And if you're listing out a makeup specifically, you can put in eyeliner if you're talking about the eyeliner that you're using. And for the detail, you can put in Caroline Graphic Ink Tattoo. Then the graphic is going to be specific on the footage that you're actually showing. So this time, let's export this as if I'm using a Canva basic account. So instead of black, I'm going to change the background to green. PNG. Just the last file so back in premiere pro i have a stock footage of a woman applying eyeliner and let's download the graphic that we created this is the stock footage that we have let's put the graphic on top you want to search for ultra key drag it onto the graphic effects controls and then as you can see under ultra key the key color is black if you click on this and click on the green it makes it a green screen and for the transition on this i actually like to use the very basic transition which is like sliding in i like to use the transition push bring it down to 10 seconds and i want it to appear from the right side so if it pushes in true that's what the graphic looks like and if you want it to fade out you do the same thing just put in push So now let's try to do the messaging. You can search for chat bubble and click on anything that you like. I want it to look as realistic as possible, as close, like as similar to how it actually looks like on my phone as possible. So I want to use this chat bubble. Let's add in a circle frame. This is going to replicate like who the sender is of this message. And then I'm going to put in my own photo. So for example, this one, I want this to be color blue, but I want the blue to be as realistic as possible again. So we're going to go to iOS color blue. And as you can see, Apple actually has a website for all of the color schemes that they use under the Apple Developer Human Interface Guidelines. So if you scroll to the bottom, these are all of the system colors that they use specifically on their phones and systems. You can use this as reference for the color palette that you want to use. But anyway, since there's this one already, I'll just use this one. It would be smart to have a color dropper extension. I used to have one, but I don't know why it's not here. But anyway, instead of using color drop, you can just download it, upload the file, and then drag it here. Here, I'll just use the color dropper on Canva. So I'll use this, make it blue, delete. Again, I like to use the font enter. Letter spacing, negative 25. Make it smaller. Hi, I'm editing this tutorial. And if you want to be more realistic, you can actually add in an emoji. So all of these emojis I download from a site called Emojipedia. Again, I'm going to link all of the resources or all of the links that I like to use below. You can search for a heart icon, go to emoji designs, and you can see that whichever system you're following, whether it's Apple or Google or Samsung, these are what the different red hearts Hearts look like for each system so for me specifically I like to use the Apple one so I'll save this import it to Canva and then I have a folder for emojis for this one specifically because I'm filming a tutorial I'll just put in like a film clapper emoji and as you can see that's what it looks like I think the proportion for this it looks a little bit too big for the image so I'm actually gonna make this smaller put it at the center and if you want to add in a little bit more detail you can just duplicate this set this as left indent and then I'll put my name on here just so it feels a little bit more personalized so if you want to add in little notes throughout your vlog maybe you can even use this as a transition I I think this is a great graphic to add in so again we'll just put this in graphics i'll use the same stock image of the sky we'll add in the message and this is what it looks like for the transition on this you can just put cross to solve bring it down to about 10 seconds and if you play it back it looks realistic usually for messages they kind of bounce upwards so with an iMessage you can also search for iphone message message sound and there are a bunch on here this one has a send sound effect and a receive sound effect so again copy this link bring it to the youtube to wav converter import it to adobe hover over the music file and just use this specifically 
put I for input and then O for output. So this is the only segment that I want to add in. Okay, so that's the general gist of how I edit the iOS graphics on my videos. If I could sum up the process, I edit the graphics on Canva just so it stays intact and it's very customizable to how you would want it to look like. You can even change the font to something that you like a lot more so that it feels a little bit more personal. And then you want to import those graphics, put it to Adobe, add in some transitions and a sound effect, and then you're good to go. So if you don't want to waste your time creating your own graphics, I actually have a Canva template that you can download. You can scan this QR code to visit the website or I'm gonna leave a link below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a comment below on what episode you want to see next. I'm actually planning for it to be Netflix but if you want it to be Zoom, we can do Zoom or Spotify. We can do Spotify. Leave a comment below for any of your requests. Like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!